Alright, come on. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the multi God Yahweh. And do so in the name of his only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Your name, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. We're the Hebrew Israelites. We come out here week in and week out to let the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans know who they are according to the Bible. Okay? And according to the to biblical prophecy, according to history and archaeology as well. Black and Hispanics and Native Americans are the true children of Israel. Okay, we come out week in and week out to 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 expose the white man, the so-called white man, the so-called Caucasian Edomite, the so-called Caucasian to his true biblical identity, which is the Edomite that the Bible speaks to, the children of Esau, the people who, who the Lord hates, the goddamn devil the Bible speaks to. Come out week in and week out to prophesy destruction to Canada and to America. Right. So with that, give me um, Isaiah 45. Okay. Alright. Because the Christian church, the Christian church lies to our people and lies to the masses and tells people that, that God loves everybody. When you cannot find that in the Bible anywhere. There's no nowhere in the Bible that it say that God loves everybody on the earth. What people, what the Christian church does is prey on the ignorances of the masses because the mass, the masses, 99% of these people that, that profess that they believe in this Bible don't even read the Bible. Right. And that's what the Christian church does. They prey upon the people who, who are ignorant to the facts and to the, to the scriptures themselves, right? Okay? So what you got? Isaiah 45, verse 17. Uh huh? But Israel. But who? But Israel. Israel. Read shall be saved in the most high. This Israel, this nation, right? Which today are called so-called, are called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. This is the only people that salvation is, is, is prophesied to and promised to in this Bible, okay? Not everybody on the planet Earth. Israel shall be saved. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans shall be saved. Why? Why only Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? Because Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the only ones that need salvation, huh? We're the only ones that speak of the language of the people who raped, robbed, and murdered us and enslaved us. Right. Okay? We're the only ones who've had a, a false religion forced down our throats, huh? Okay? We are the only ones that were forced by, 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 by threats of death to worship our slave master. Okay? Right. So we're the ones who need salvation, all right? East Indians don't need salvation. East Indians have East, have India, man, all right? White people don't need salvation because white people are around murdering everything, man, genociding everything, oppressing everything. Those who need salvation are the ones at the bottom, man. And there's nobody more, more downtrodden and more on the bottom than blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Right. That's why we're the only ones who are going to be saved because we're the only ones who need salvation. All right, read what you got again. Start again from the top. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 17. Uh huh. But Israel. But Israel, read. Shall be saved in the Most High. Uh huh. With an everlasting salvation. Everlasting salvation is coming to you, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. I understand that in the ghettos of America, of America and in all the ghettos that wither so the Lord has scattered you, it seems dire, man. The situation looks grim. It looks like we'll never be saved up out of this hellhole. But the Lord has promised everlasting salvation to his people, right? You blacks, you Hispanics, and you Native Americans, right? You shall not be ashamed nor confounded. And there's going to be a day where you're not going to be ashamed. There's going to be a day where you're not confounded, man. Okay? Read. World without end. Hold on, what? World without end. The Bible just called the nation of Israel a world without end. Because we're gonna we're gonna get deeper into this because the Christian church loves to use a certain scripture known as John 3 and 16 that says God so loved the world. And like I said earlier, they prey on the ignorances of the masses, not realizing that the word world doesn't mean the entire earth. 
not not even going into the, the original language that the scriptures were in, written in. Okay, but well, we're gonna get into that later. Give me um. Give me wisdom of Solomon, chapter eighteen, verse twenty-four. All right. When you read the Bible, the Bible was written in first and foremost Hebrew, and and secondly Greek, then coined Greek. To get full understanding of the words of, of what's being written and what's being said, you need to go into these words, man. But the Christian Church will never tell you that. That word in, in John three sixteen, the word world, it does not mean the whole inhabited earth, man. That word is cosmos. And that means society, age, and government. Wisdom of Psalms, chapter 18, verse 24. Uh-huh. For in the long garment. In the what? For in the long garment. So if you were to actually read the Bible, you would know about a group of men known as the Levites, a family within the nation of Israel that was ordained to be the priests of the nation, the priests of God, the Levites, okay? And, and, and among the Levites, there was, even, there was even another sect within the Levites known as the Aaronites. And the Aaronites would wear long garments, okay? And now that garment, we're going to read more about that garment. Salam, read on. We must Solomon 18 verse 24. Uh -huh. For in the long garment was the whole world. The whole what? For in the long garment was the whole world. The whole world was on that garment. Now is that talking literal? Of course it's not talking literal. Keep reading. And in the four rows. The four what? And in the four rows. Read. Of the stones. The what? Of the stones. The stones. The four rows of the stones. Go ahead. Was the glory of the Father's raven. The world is in the, in, in the four rows of the stones. Stones. And the glory of the most high graven, man. We're going to see what these stones are. What these four rows of stones are. And what they represent. Give me Exodus 28. And get the second verse. Exodus chapter 28 verse 2 Read. And thou shalt and thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother uh -huh. for glory and for beauty. So the Lord commanded commanded Moses to make garments for the Aaronites. Okay? Jump to verse 17. Verse 17. And thou shalt set in it settings of stone. Uh-huh. Even four rows. Four of stone. rows of stones, like we read in Solomon. The whole world. Go ahead. The first row shall be a sardius, a topaz, uh -huh. and a carbuncle. Jump to twenty-one. Verse twenty-one. Uh -huh. And this, and the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel. Be the names of who? Be the name. Be with the names of the children of Israel. Read. Twelve, according to their names. Uh huh. Take the engravings of a signet, every one with his name shall be, shall they be according to the twelve tribes. According to who? According to the twelve tribes. So Solomon, in his in all his wisdom, in the book of wisdom of Solomon, wrote the whole world is in the long garment. We're reading here in the book of the law that those those, those that the on that garment were the twelve stones in rows of in four in uh, in four rows. And those stones represented each tribe of Israel. And those that garment represents the nation of Israel. So when the Bible says that the whole world was on the long garment, it's talking about the nation of Israel. All right? We're, we're right now setting precedence that the world, when, in, in Hebraic thought, when they're talking about the world, they're talking about their own world, the world of Israel. That's what this is setting precedence for. This is how you get understanding of this next scripture, okay? Give me Hebrews 1 and 2. Just to substantiate and prove that there's more than one world. Okay?
reads this Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2. Go ahead. Hath in these last days uh -huh. spoken unto us read. by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. That's talking about who the world enemy called Jesus Christ, right? Read. By whom also he made the world. He made the what? He whom also he made the world. Worlds with plural. There's more than one world, and we just substantiated that that's a scriptural, scriptural understanding. That there's more than one world. Okay? We're going to further prove it. Give me uh, Luke 2 and 1. Alright? Because anybody that studies, studies history, okay? And studies the Bible, biblical history, right? You'll understand that during the time of, of, of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ... The contemporary empire that was ruling and subjugating Judea and Samaria, the nation of Israel, was the Romans. And if you study history once again, you'll know that the Romans conquered a lot of land. Yes, they did. But they did not conquer the entire earth. It was not a global empire, okay? So I would love a Christian to explain this scripture to me. Do what you got. This is Luke chapter 2 and verse 1. And it came to pass uh -huh. in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus. Caesar Augustus, right? Read. That all the world. All the what? That all the world. Read. Should be taxed. All the world should be taxed. Now, Caesar Augustus once again did not have a global empire. So how in the hell would he tax the entire world? Clearly that's not what the scripture is saying. Clearly that's not what the word world ex precisely means in the Bible. Once again, the word, the word world, when you look in the, into the Greek, the word, word, the word for world there is cosmos, which means government, age, or society. And the society that, that uh, Caesar Augustus was going to tax, the world he was going to tax, was the Roman Empire, not the entire earth, man. Okay? Let's get another one. Give me John 18 and 20. Out of the mouth of who the world calls Christ, man. Because I know if I ask any Christian where was where was Christ's ministry, a Christian will tell you that Christ's ministry was in Judea, in the land of Israel, Samaria, in Samaria as well. In the land of Israel. But let's see what Christ said out of his own mouth. This is John chapter 18, verse 20. Uh huh. Yeah, how is shy? Read it verbatim, Bobby. This is John chapter 18, verse 20. Uh huh. Jesus answered him, I speak openly to the world. Jesus Christ, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, said he spoke openly to the world. Once again, anybody who studies knows that Jesus. Who the world calls Jesus did not go throughout the entire globe, did not go to damn Australia, did not come to this side of the earth, the Americas. He did not go to China. But yet and still, who the world calls Christ says he spoke openly to the world. So is Jesus Christ a liar? Or is the white man the goddamn devil the Bible speaks of? I'm leaning toward the latter. Once again, that world is the world of Israel. And that word in the Greek, once again, is cosmos, which means society, age, or government. And the government and the society that he spoke openly to were the children of Israel. Because right. that's who he was sent to. That's who he was sent to save. That's who he was sent to die for. Not no goddamn heathens. All praises to the Most High when a heathen drops on his face. On some ice, man. All praise to the Most High, my shit, the <laughs> See? But yeah. Who the world calls Christ said that he died, said that he spoke openly to the world. But you can't show me in the Bible who the world calls Christ going to China, man. You can't show me who the world calls Christ going to damn Rome. Okay? You can't do it. Because he was not sent to, to the heathens, man. Okay? Give me, give me, um, give me 1 John 2 and 15. Right? 
And we're going to see that we're going to see that the Bible tells us not to love the entire world, not to love everybody on the earth. Okay? Read what you got. First John chapter 2 and verse 15. Uh-huh. Love not the world. Love what? Love not the world. Love not the world. The Christian church will have you think you're supposed to love everything in the earth, love everybody. The Bible says love not the world. Read. Neither the things that are in the world. Uh-huh. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If you love the world, like the Christian church tells you to, love everything, love everybody, love, 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 the love of the Father is not in you, man. Okay? The Lord is the Lord, the Lord delights in a just balance. The Lord doesn't want our, his people just simply loving every damn thing. You, have, you can have righteous hatred, okay? Give me John 3 and 16 now. This is the more this is the world's most famous scripture in all the Bible. Okay? And it is also the most misconstrued, taken out of context, lied upon scripture on the entire earth as well, man. Because the white man is the goddamn devil, the Bible scripture. Right. And I went there to So he has all you blacks and Hispanics thinking that this scripture is, is, is the scripture you go to to validate loving everybody on the earth. Meanwhile, everybody hates you, man. Meanwhile, the white man hates your guts, but he wants you to love everybody. Read what you got. John chapter 3, verse 16. Huh? For God so loved the world. God so loved the world, read. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So some silly, silly atheist, or some silly Muslim, or some silly whatever, non-believer in the scriptures will say, look, that's a contradiction. Because you just read where it says not to love the world. That if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. And now the Bible is saying that the, 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 the Lord loved the world. We just proved through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai that the world is you blacks, you Hispanics, and you Native Americans. That's the nation right. of Israel. Not everybody on this world. God does not love everybody, man. God does not love everybody on the earth. God only loves black people, Hispanic people, and Native American people. We're the only ones that God loves. That's right. God hates you goddamn white devils, man. God hates you heathens. Understand this. God so loved the world is talking about the nation of Israel like we showed. The, the world was in the garment of the Levites, man. The world was in those four rows of stones. Named each stone named after one of the tribes of Israel. That's the world. That's the world that God loves. That's the world that God sent his son to die for. That whosoever of that world, of that nation, should believe on him should have everlasting life. Huh? Give, me, give me Acts the fifth chapter, the 29th verse. White man is a devil and a liar, man. Now everybody out here thinking we're supposed to love, love, love. Meanwhile, he rapes and robs and murders and oppresses the earth. Man. Right. Read what you got. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Uh-huh. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, uh -huh. We ought to obey God. We ought to obey the Most High. Not the white man. Not the damn pastor pork chops. Obey the Most High God, Yahweh. Read. We ought to obey God rather than men. Uh huh. The God of our fathers. The God of our fathers. A Jew is speaking. Okay. A black man is speaking. And he said, The God of our fathers. Read. Raised up Jesus, whom ye slew. He, the, the Most High raised up who the world calls Jesus Christ. And he was killed. Read. 
whom he slew and hanged on a tree. And he was hung on a tree, crucified. Go ahead. Him hath the Most High God exalted with his right hand uh -huh. to be a prince. To be a prince, read. And a savior. A savior, go ahead. For to give repentance uh -huh. to Israel. No, to the whole world. For to give repentance to Israel. No, to the white man. To be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel. Israel is the one who's gonna be who's gonna get that savior. Israel is the one who was granted repentance. Okay? Finish that up. And forgiveness of sins. Israel is the one who's gonna get the mercy of having their sins forgiven, man. Huh? The white man's sins are not gonna be forgiven. The white man's sins are gonna be remembered on the day that the Lord judges this goddamn devil. Right. Okay? And we hasten that day up here. Give me, get, go back to Isaiah 45 to 17. Right? Now we can get, now we can get true understanding. Right? Now, now you should have the true understanding of John 3.16. Through the spirit and the power of Yahweh. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 45 and 17. Uh-huh. But Israel shall be saved. Israel shall be saved, man. We just read in the book of Acts, after Christ died, that he was only for the nation of Israel. You go front to back in this Bible, everything is about Israel. Salvation is only for Israel. Read. But Israel shall be saved in the Most High. Israel shall be saved, read. With an everlasting salvation. Uh-huh. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. Read. World without end. And Israel is that world that will not end, man. When the Lord comes back and establishes Israel, that world will not end. The world of who the world calls Jesus Christ, his reign, his government shall not end. This white man's world will end. This place is going to fall. And if you can't see it, it's falling already, man. That's why they got some some retard named Donald J. Trump running the earth. This world is ready to fall. Right. The world, the world of the government or the society of who the world calls Jesus Christ. Yeah, how was Shia Mashiach, a black man? His world will never end, man. Okay? Give me song. I'm too shy. Give me the book of song. This is Psalm chapter 14, verse 7. Uh -huh. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion. The salvation of Israel is going to come out of Zion, lad. When the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people. And that's going to be the salvation, man. Huh? When the Lord brings us up out of this captivity under this goddamn devil, the white man. Under these goddamn heathens, man. That's salvation. That's why I'm up here telling you that nobody needs to be saved outside of blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Because blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the only nation of people in captivity right now. In captivity under their enemies. Okay? Let me move the first chapter. A lot of you, a lot of you don't even know what salvation is. The Bible calls, the Bible defines salvation as being saved out of the hands of your enemies, man. And who does the white man have to be saved from? He's the one going around murdering everybody, man. Invading everybody's country. Raping everybody's women. What the hell does the white man have to be saved from, man? The world needs to be saved from the white man. And when I say the world, I'm talking about blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Okay? Where is that? This is Luke chapter 1, verse 67. Uh -huh. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost uh -huh. and prophesied, saying, Read. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, Read. which have been since the world began, what? that we should be saved from our enemies. We, 
the man that is speaking in this verse is a Jew, once again, a black man, okay? And he is saying that we, the thing that the prophets of this spoke speaking to the world again, is that we should be saved from our enemies. The nation of Israel, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans should be saved from their enemies. This is what the, the whole Bible is about, man. Keep reading. That we should be saved from our enemies uh -huh. and from the hand of all that hate us. And it's no surprise, man. And it, sh and it shouldn't be no surprise and, and, and it shouldn't even be a doubt in your mind that these heathens hate you, black man. These damn East Indians, they hate our guts. They hate the sight of us. This goddamn devil, the white man, he hates you, black man. Hispanic man. There you got, you got a, a, thousands of Hispanics coming to the border and the white man meets him with armies, man. When he's trying to get into his own land. But the white man meets them with armies. The white man is our enemy and he hates us. Keep reading. Verse 72, to perform the mercy uh -huh. promised to our fathers. The mercy that was promised to our fathers. Go ahead. Give me a second, brother. Okay. Finish that out and then we'll deal with the brother. Hey, brother, come back, come back, come back. Come on, let's finish this out, we'll deal with you. Go ahead. And to remember his holy covenant. Uh-huh. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. To our father Abraham, go ahead. That he would grant unto us uh -huh. that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies Read. might serve him without fear. And that's what we need. That's what black people need, Hispanic people need. We need to be delivered out of the hand of our enemies. Who's our enemy? The so-called white man. Who else is our enemy? All these other heathens that oppress our people, man. Huh? Alright? Did you agree with that, brother? I agree with that, bro. You know, it's something like we can fight. It's what something like... There's, 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 there's a, there's a, let me let me let me put it like there's a, there's a, there's a battle a warrior can win. What do you mean? We are warriors, but we can never win the battle. You can You know what? You want to know why we can win the battle? A battle a warrior can never ever win. You know that? Why? Why, why would you say that we can't win? You be say, I want to hear your part, and I will tell you why I say because a battle a warrior can win. Okay. Hold on. Give me Deuteronomy one. Let me do the one one. 41. I'm going to tell you why I think we can't win. And I'm not going to tell you out of my own mind. Because up here we deal with the scriptures. The scriptures alone. Alright? I'm going to give you the scripture. And then I'm going to explain to you what it's do you saying. Think you know the Bible? Yeah, we know the Bible. What? Read that. This is Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 41. This is why blacks and Hispanics can't fight against the white man and win. Read. Then he answered and said unto me, uh -huh. We have sinned against the Lord. That's the main reason. Because blacks and Hispanics are the children of Israel. Hmm. And the Lord said, I would be with you oh, um, if you keep the law, statutes, and commandments. But we have sinned. Sin is transgression of the law, breaking the laws of God. Read. We have sinned against the Lord. Uh -huh. We will go up and fight. And this is what a lot of our people have tried to do. A lot of our people... Can tell you that? A lot of our people... A lot of our people try to... Try, have tried this, right? You heard about... Uh, um, Nat Turner, right? You had several people try to fight against the white man and failed. Why? Because we have sinned against the Lord. Go ahead. We will go up and fight uh -huh. according to all that the Lord our God commanded us. Read. And when he had girded on every man his weapons of war, ye were ready to go up into the hill. Read. And the Lord said unto me, Say unto them, Go not up, neither fight, for I am not among you, lest ye be smitten before your enemies. So these Israelites at this time, they were getting ready to go fight their enemies. The Lord said, don't go fight because I'm not with you. You're going to lose because I'm not with you because you're not keeping the life of your man. And right now, it's, it's even more evident, man, because our people fight against each other more than they fight anybody else. Our people gun each other down more than they yeah. fight anybody else. So how, so how are we going to build an army that's fighting itself? We need to come back to the last of the commandments. Because the last of the commandments say to love each other, man. Until we Keep come back to this commandment, we will suffer. Exactly. That's facts. <laughs> That's facts, man. Understand? The God will keep pursuing us like He pursued yep. Israel. That's right. That's I, right. Uh, should I tell you why we can? Is a is a is a war that a warrior can win? Yeah, go ahead. Um, you know the Bible. You know the Bible very well. Yeah. I've forgotten the verse. Yeah. When um, Sir, is it Isaac that had Esau and Jacob? Yeah, Sarah. Sarah had Esau and Jacob. Lot told 
Sarah, like there's a two nation yeah. in your womb, right. which is Jacob and Esau. Right. You understand that? The blacks are the Esau. Yeah. We are Esau. White Jacobs are the white. Yeah. So we, it's just like it's 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 it's, 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 it's like it's from God. We're men. It's, 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 we're men to serve this people. Right. But well, it's a two nation in Sarah's womb. Yeah. Jacob and Esau. Yeah, Genesis 25, right? Yeah. We're gonna get it, man. Because yes, the, it, 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 it talks about the two nations. It talks about the two nations, and, and then it goes into something deeper. It's something physically happens between the two, and it, and it gets deep. Go ahead. This is Genesis chapter 25, verse 25. And it started 21. And 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was bare. Right. And the Lord was entreated of him. Okay, go ahead. And Rebecca, his wife, conceived. She had she had she got the babies, right? She got the babies, go ahead. And the children struggled together within her. So this is where it gets deep. Already in the womb, mm. the children are already struggling. struggling. They're already fighting one another. Yeah. Which is foreshadowing all the, the conflict that's gonna be happening, happening between these two nations, right? That's it. Read. And she said, if it be so, uh -huh. why am I thus? Why am I thus? Go ahead. And she went to inquire of the Lord. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people Go ahead. shall be separated from thy bow. Read. Mm -hmm. And the one people shall be stronger than the other. Okay. And we don't need to go into that. It's obvious who's stronger than the other. Who's it's who's obvious <laughs> the black man is way more powerful than the goddamn devil, the white man. That's no, there's no, there's no mystery there. You understand? Okay. You look at every boxing champion. You look at all the UFC champions. All you got is blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Okay. 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 And the elder shall serve the younger. The elder oh, shall, shall serve the younger. younger. Go ahead. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, Read. behold, there were twins in her womb. Go ahead. And the first came out red, uh -huh. all over like in hairy garment. The one came out red, right? We know who that is. The white boy, when he's born, come out red, right? <laughs> Read. And they called his name Esau. This is what the Lord calls these white people, man. They call themselves white. They're not even white. They're red. Right? They call black, so-called black people black. Black people aren't even black. They're brown. But it's yeah. just mind games that they like to play because he's the devil that the Bible speaks of. Right? Go ahead. And after that came his brother out. Uh -huh. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel. So, what did they say? The elder shall serve the younger. The white man came out first. So he's going to serve the younger. He's going to serve black Hispanics. But that's not what we see on the earth today, right? We see the other way, opposite way. We see blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans serving the white man. Right? Keep reading. And I, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. And the boys grew. And Esau was a cunning hunter. Esau was a cunning hunter, go ahead. A man of the field. And that's these white people, man. That's what they love to do. They love to hunt animals. They, they love to be out in the field, rock climbing. You know what I'm saying? Kayaking, I'm all this madness that black people <laughs> and Hispanic people don't like to do. Yeah. What do black and Hispanic people love to do? Read on. And Jacob was a plain man, uh -huh. dwelling in tents. And that's what blacks and Hispanics like to do. We like to just kick it at home Chill, with our women and our drink, children. Smoke, drink, relax, chill. You know what I'm saying? That's that's who that that's the that's the scripture bearing witness to who is who on the earth. Okay. Give me second Ezra. Well, like I'm gonna be serious. They get us like you know what just happened right there. Good. Security just embarrassed me. That's what I'm going through right now. Yeah, so yeah. like this is gonna last. No matter how you keep saying it, yeah. no matter you keep going against them, they're gonna fuck you up. No, it's not. because it's not gonna last. It's, See, it's gonna be for a short period, man. This this devil, his world is almost over. If you can look around you, all these nations are rising up against the white man. Right? Iran, right. Russia, Korea. All these nations are rising up against this goddamn devil, man. I'm just trying to Because his time is almost up. I'm just trying to tell you something. What are you doing? I bet you three days more they're going to be like, they don't like, you're speaking the truth, bro. Like, it's not going to last. Bro, we've been out here for months already. Oh, my And listen, listen. White man, white white people, they've tried to fight us. They've tried to come up against us. They've tried to call the cops on us. And guess what? We're out here doing the Lord's work. So the Lord is watching over us. So we're still out here. We're still out here to this very day, man. We've not gotten arrested. Look, we've gotten white people arrested for attacking us. 
Ooh. They get arrested. You understand? We're right here by the, the, by the Boydum station. And we don't know that damn thing is happening to us, man. Because we're doing the work of the Lord and He's smiling down on us. Everything we're saying is coming out of His book, unlike the Christian church. Okay, but the law didn't say you should discriminate. The law didn't say you should discriminate? Yes. What do you mean, what law? The law. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, black is fucking me. The Lord, the Lord, well, hold on. The that. Lord Himself is racist. Man. You understand that? Give Deuteronomy 7. The Lord Himself is not racist. The Lord Himself is racist. What does racism mean? What is racism? I don't know. You can racism, tell me. racism means you put one group of people above all other people. That's racism. The white man is obviously racist. Okay? The white man says he's the greatest people. He's the white people, the pure people. The superior. Right? Because right? they have but let's see if the Lord, let's see if the Lord is racist, man. Okay, let's see. Go ahead. You know I love inquiring. I love this love is Deuteronomy love. chapter 7 verse 6. Yeah. For thou art in holy people. Thou art in holy people. He's talking to the nation of Israel, right? Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, right? Unto the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. how, how do you know what you did when you was saying it? The huh? Lord thy God. Do you know what you, what you did when you was saying it? I'm reading it out of his word. Well, he so didn't say that the black in his face is saying Well, you can, go, you can go into the, no, he's saying Israel. He's talking to Israel. Alright, what is an Israelite? I'm an Israelite. An Israelite. With Israelite. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people. Special people, go ahead. Unto himself. Read. Above all people. Above who? Above all people. Above all people, read. That are upon the face of the earth. So Israelites, and when you read the Bible, you go into the prophecies, you find out who the Israelites are, because there's curses on the Israelites. Slavery is a curse. Hating your brother is a curse. Okay. And you don't see that no, amongst no other that. people other than blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. All right, and we just, re we just, we just, you just agreed with us when we read in Genesis 25 that one would be stronger than the other. So what's the problem with us being greatest people on the earth? Bro? That's what the you Bible says. You and God why? said it himself. You know why? You're scared. Huh? You're scared. Scared of what? Your greatness. Because what do you mean I'm scared? I'm, 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 I'm not scared. I'm not saying, I'm I out said here, they I'm are out here, scared. Listen, they are scared of your greatness. I'm out here proclaiming the greatness of black people, Hispanic people in America. I'm out here in everybody's face telling them that God said we're better than them. So I'm not scared of let nothing. Me tell you, let me tell you I know, I don't fear Everybody nothing. don't want to, everybody don't want to face Hispanic. That's fine. Whether they're here or where, we're going to come out here and let them know. You know, but wait, did we didn't down everybody? The difference is so obvious. But you know, we're so blind to the fact. We're so ignorant of the fact. Like, the fact is that the blacks are great. Black is beautiful, right? Black is beautiful. That's just what I know. Yeah. So yeah, anything about you, why? I don't care about you, but I know for myself. I can speak for myself that but black not, is beautiful. See, not everybody has that understanding. Right? You have people. You That's have, why you have you, a lot you're of, doing you the work. I encourage. I, I like have, that. You have a lot of people that are so-called black that would like to make their skin lighter because they don't know that black is beautiful. I because don't know. They, they've That's been deceived. The they've been deceived by the white man. That's so we're the out business. here to, to let our people know that they're the greatest people on the earth. Like, that's why I'm encouraging you, but I know the system is going to go against you. Hey, that's what we want, man. Because this system is is, is demonic. Yeah, if you can face the system, you right, can we're fight out the here, system. We're if out here standing for righteousness. System, if you can go against the system, you can fight the system. You can, you can like... Right. We're fighting the system right now, man. Yeah, I know you're fighting what? the system, guess but what? I the know system, you're not going to last the because system, the system is still eventually going like, to get to you. The system wants us, me and this brother right here, to be drug dealers and gangbangers. Right? Keep fighting. You understand? No, I'm they want sure. us to be drug dealers yeah? and gangbangers. Mm -hmm. They want us to promote drug dealing and gang, gang banging. They yeah. want us to promote homosexuality. Yeah. They want us to promote all that, but guess what? We're out here promoting the Lord and His laws and His statutes and commandments. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do that to the day that you perish, man. Or until the day that the Lord, the day the Lord comes. But what I'm going to try to tell you Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh -huh. but against principal power. That's what we're against fighting against. against. Read. Against power. Uh -huh. Against the rulers fighting. of this darkness. And that's what we're doing out here. <laughs> right? We're trying to bring our people back to the light. We're trying to bring our people out of drug dealing, out of being a, a homosexual. Okay, out of being a gangbanger and back to keeping the last and commandments of God. Well, I, I encourage what you're doing, but I, I know you're not going to go far because the system is going to hey. go one way or the other to get to you. Hey. I know if what you're That's how you feel. I know that's, uh, like, that's how you that's, feel. That's, that's cool, just, man. That's just but the guess way what? of life. Guess what? That's if, the way of life. If you come out here, you come out here every Friday at 530, you're going to yeah. see us out here. Friday, no matter what. Rain, shine, snow, war, no matter what, we're going to be today, out here. From today, you're going to see me out here 530. I've, I've, heard, that, I've see, heard that before. No, me, me. Right? You know, this is the first time you see. Like, right. I don't know you, but I just do like. Right, right, right. You know, 
but like, I don't think Batman wall. Okay. 5.30 okay. Friday. Let's we're see how here. far you're gonna go. We're out here. That's it. Right? We're I'm gonna see how far you're gonna go it's Friday. Out of season. You got something else? I'm gonna be here at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, but I don't know. But yeah, I wanna here. see how far you're gonna go. Right? Because get, the system... Get, get second answer 6 and 8. You can't fight the system. We're fighting it right now, man. I know you're fighting the only ones, How long is it gonna last? We're not the only ones, bro. Because there's brothers, there's brothers all over Canada and all over America doing this, man. And brothers are changing their lives. Brothers are coming out of drug dealing. Brothers are coming out of treating our women like whores. Brothers are coming out of all these wicked things. And the sisters are coming out of being wicked, man. The sisters are coming out of being whores. The sisters are getting off the stripper pole, man. I love that. I love it. Even get you got. This is Second Ezra, chapter six, verse eight. Because the brother lacks faith, all right? I don't lack faith. Bro hey, brother, you lack faith. No, I don't lack faith. But the Bible says this. Go ahead. And he said unto me, from Abraham well, unto like, Isaac, I've done this. when Jacob and Esau were born, we like? of him, uh -huh. Jacob's it? hand held first the heel of Esau. So when Jacob was born, he grabbed the heel of Esau. Go ahead. For Esau is the end I of love the what world. You told me. I'm going to think about it this time. Esau night. is the end of the world. This white man's world is going to end. It doesn't matter how, how faithless you are. You think, the world, you think we're going to fall. The white man's society is going to fall. Thus saith the Lord. Man. Go ahead. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And our world is going to reign forever. Understand that? Under who the world calls Christ, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, a black man. Okay? And it doesn't matter how much faith you blacks and Hispanics have, man. Somebody got to be the two-thirds. Lord willing, that brother gain some faith, seeing us out here week in, week out, every, every, every damn, every damn uh, Saturday, man. You understand? Lord willing, the brother, the brother gets some faith and joins us. Or at least changes his life and, and starts keeping the locks out of his commandments. And faith in, in a, and faith in Yahweh Shad. Because that brother telling us that we're gonna be, we're gonna, we're gonna give up, we're gonna do this and that. That's faith. That's faithless, man. That's having no faith. You know that scripture to be a little faith? Matthew chapter 8 verse 26 and he said unto them why are ye fearful O ye of little faith and that's what we should have asked the brother now why are you fearful why do you fear the white man more than you fear the more than you fear the Lord man? because the Lord has it written in his in, the, in, in his word that we will be delivered from the hand of our enemies man. so why are you fearful we come out here week in and week out boldly to declare, the, the, oh, we're already declaring the victory. The victory has already been declared against you goddamn devils, man, you white people. Your right. loss has already been declared. And we're out here righteously, boldly telling you to your face, man. So how can you have, how can you have such little faith? How can you be in such doubt, man? When the Lord that said that if you sin against me, I will put you on slave ships, Said that I will, I will, I will, I will deliver you out of the hand of your slave masters. Didn't you go into slavery, black man? So how can you have such doubt? Let's get back to this. Ooh, so Isaiah, give me Isaiah 46 and 13. Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 13. Uh -huh. I bring near my righteousness. Uh -huh. It shall not be far off. Read. And my salvation shall not tarry. The salvation of the Lord shall not tarry, man. To you it feels like forever. To you it feels like we're never going to be saved out of this place, man. To you it seems like the white man's reign is going to be forever. But the Lord said his salvation shall not tarry. Read on. And I will place salvation in Zion. And Zion is going to get salvation. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the people who need it most, are going to get that salvation, man. Whether you have faith in it or not, it's going to happen because the Lord said it would. 
And his word does not come back void, man. Go ahead. For Israel, my glory. Israel, his glory, man. Get Isaiah 62 and 10. Isaiah chapter 62 verse 10 Good. but they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit uh -huh. therefore he was turned to be their enemy Read. and he fought against them Read. then he remembered the days of old Moses and his people saying where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock Read. Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him? That led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm, uh -huh. dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name. That led them through the deep as a horse in the wilderness, that they should not stumble. As a beast goes down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord caused him to rest. So didst thou lead thy people to make thyself a glorious name. Look down from heaven, and behold from the hab from the habitation of thy holiness and of thy glory. Where is thy zeal and thy strength? Where, 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 where? Fifteen. Oh, Isaiah sixty two verse ten. Uh -huh. Go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people. And that's what we're out here doing. We're out here at the gates, huh? Preparing the way. Go ahead. Cast up. Cast up. The highway. Uh -huh. Gather out the stones. Lift up a standard for the people. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to gather up the stones. The stones that we read about earlier. The nation of Israel. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We're gathering you up. Go ahead. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. Uh huh. Say ye to the daughter of Zion. To who? Say ye to the daughter of Zion. The Lord is telling us to say to the daughter of Zion. Not everybody on the earth is the daughter of Zion. The daughter of Zion, when you, when you study the scriptures, and you study the prophecies, and you study the curses, and study history and archaeology, the daughter of Zion is you so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. The Lord commanded us to say to you this. Go ahead. Behold, thy salvation cometh. Thy salvation cometh, man. It's coming. Read. His reward is with him uh -huh. and his work before him. Read. And they shall call them the holy people. The holy people. Go ahead. The redeemed of the Lord. The redeemed. Read. And thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. And that's when we're going to be not forsaken. That's all. Uh, all right, give me... Jeremiah three, this is Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 23 Read. truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hill and, that, and, and, it's, and it's a vain thing man it's a vain thing and it's a stupid, meaningless, pointless thing for a white man to hope for salvation. When you, and you, when, when you are in your heaven, what do you have to be saved from? What do you East Indians have to be saved from? Is somebody going into your neighborhoods and selling your people cigarettes and damn butt wraps? Is somebody coming into, into your businesses taking them over and hiring only their people? No, that's not happening to you, man. That's happening to blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, man. So for you other people to, to act like you need to be saved, you're at your damn minds. That's a vain thought. The only people that need to be saved are black people, Hispanic people, and Native American people. That's right. All right? The white man is the goddamn devil, the Bible speaks of. Bring it out. It's a vain thing for you to want to be saved when you're in your heaven, man. Black people and Hispanic people are in hell. Native American people are in hell. We need to be saved. Now you goddamn heathens, man. Read that again from the top. This is Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 23. Uh-huh. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for 
from the hill. We're out here proclaiming that this place is going to be destroyed, man. Okay? It's going to be destroyed via thermonuclear weapons. And when you hear that, and if for somehow you heathens believe it, hoping for salvation from that is vain. It's meaningless for you. You're going to die in this place, man. Along with the wicked of our people that don't hearken, you're going to die in this place. It's a vain thing for you to hope for salvation. Read. And from the multitude of mountains, uh -huh. truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. And that's where the salvation of blacks, Hispanics, and Native American lies. Not in the white man. Not in cooning for this devil. Not in loving all these other people that hate you. Our salvation is in the Lord. These people have never loved you. These people will never love you. Okay? White people have never loved black people. White people have never loved Hispanic people or Native American people. They have always hated us. So your salvation is not in any of these other nations. Your salvation is in the Lord, Yahweh, and in, in His Son, Yahweh Shai. A black man, not a damn white man, okay? What some silly Christian will come up and say, well, you're reading out of the Old Testament. There's a New Testament and a New Covenant now. Let's read about the New Covenant. Huh? Go ahead. It's in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8. Read. For finding fault with them, uh -huh. he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. Read. When I will make a new covenant. A new covenant. Go ahead. With the house of Israel. No, everybody on the planet. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. The new covenant is with the house of Israel, read. And with the house of Judah. And with the house of Judah. Israel being you, you, you Hispanics, you Native Americans, you Seminole Indians, and Judah being you Negroes, you West Indians, and, and, you, and, and you Haitians, so-called. That's who the new covenant is for. Don't let this goddamn devil, the white man, or that devil, the, the Christian pastor, tell you otherwise, man. Huh? Open this book and read it for yourself. And you'll see that he's a liar. Give me Jeremiah 31 and 31. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31. Uh -huh. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. Read. That I will make a new covenant. This is where this is where this came from. Because what people don't understand is that that, that scripture in Hebrews 8 was being directly quoted from Jeremiah the 31st chapter. But you want to talk about the Old Testament is done away with. You're a damn fool, man. And you don't read the word of the Lord. So how can you be out here proclaiming what's done away with and what's not? Right. Read. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, uh -huh. that I will make a new covenant read. with the house of Israel. The new covenant is with the house of Israel, read. And with the house of Judah. And the house of Judah, once again, we see from the new, from the Old Testament to the new, the new covenant is exactly the same and untouched. Only for blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Not no goddamn East Indian, not no damn, damn Asian, not no Arab, not no, certainly not no white man. The new covenant is for you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the children of Israel. All right, read. Not according to the covenant that I made I with. Like it, right Give me Matthew one twenty one. Right. We're gonna keep. We're gonna go back into the New Testament because the Christian Church and Christians themselves love to play games, man. They love to play games. We're gonna put those games to, to, to bed through the spirit and power of the Hashem Yashem. Go ahead. This is Matthew chapter one, verse twenty-one. Uh huh. And she shall bring forth a son. She shall bring forth a son. This is talking about Mary, the mother of who the world calls Christ. See? And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Jesus, right? Read. For he shall save his people from their sins. He shall save his people from their sins. 
okay? And we read in Acts 5 and 29, he was sent for Israel. He died for Israel. Not for everybody in the earth, man. Contrary to what the Christian church says. Contrary to what the devil on the earth, the white man says. He died for Israel. Give me Matthew 10 and 5. This is Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. Go ahead. The, these 12, Jesus sent forth. Jesus sent forth 12 disciples, 12 students, 12 followers, 12, 12, uh, um, 12 people. 12, 12 of his uh, students. It's a lot. He sent 12 students out, 12 followers, his disciples. What did he tell them? Read. See, go not into the way of the Gentiles. He said, do not go to the Gentiles. Do not go to the heathens. Do not go to the people who are not your people. Go ahead. And into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Uh huh. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's who, there's, that's who these men were sent to. And that's who we're sent to, man. Through the spirit and the power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai. We've been sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Because black people are lost. Hispanic people are lost. Calling yourself a damn, a damn African when you don't even know where in Africa your people came from. You don't even know how your people got to that part of Africa when they went from whence they were taken. All right? Hispanics calling themselves after the people that raped, robbed, and murdered. Okay? Read. And as he go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that's what we're out here telling these lost sheep, man. Right? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's coming. And you better get right and repent. That's seven? Get Matthew 15. This is Matthew chapter 15, verse 22. Go ahead. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast. A woman of Canaan, right? A so-called African woman. Go ahead. And be... Out of the same coast and cried with him, cried unto him, uh -huh. saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, okay. thou son of David. So this woman came to who the world David calls Jesus. Jesus. So this woman came to this man, to, the, to who the world calls Christ. This woman was not of his nation. She was not of the same nation of him. She was not of the same ethnicity as him. Let's see what he said to her. Go ahead. O oh, son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Go ahead. But he answered her not a word. So she asked Jesus Christ to heal her daughter who was vexed with a devil, possessed. And Jesus Christ ignored her, man. But this is not the Jesus Christ that you hear about in the church. The one that loves everybody. The one that wants to hug and kiss everybody. But this is the Jesus Christ that you read about in the Bible. Because Jesus Christ was not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And this woman was not of the house of Israel. So when she asked for help, he answered her not a word. Read. But he answered her not a word. Go ahead. And his disciples came and besought him, uh -huh. saying, send her away. The disciples said, get this heathen out of here. Get her away from us, man. Go ahead. Send her away, for she cried after us. Uh-huh. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And this is the verse in the Bible that the, that the Christian church will never want you to hear. That Jesus Christ was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Only sent to you blacks, Hispanics, and you Native Americans. Not to anybody else. Right. Read. Then came she and worshipped him, uh -huh. saying, Lord, help me. She kept going, man. Because she's seen the power in this black man. So she didn't care if they were sending her away. She didn't care if he was ignoring her. She kept begging this black man to help her daughter, right? Go ahead. But he answered and said, Read. It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. So the most high, so so the, the, the son of the most high, Jesus Christ, 
told this woman that was begging him for help, it's not good that I take the bread, that's the, mean, the bread meaning his blessings, that is meant for his people, and giving it to a dog, which is that, that woman who is not of his nation, who is not of his people. And that's what you blacks and Hispanics need to look at these other people at, because that's what they look at you as. They look at you as a dog. They look at you as an animal. When they're the animal, man. When they're the dog, they're the filthy animal. You're a prince of the power, man. A holy priest, a nation of king and priest. Read. And she said, truth, Lord. She said, true. When a black man called this woman a dog, she said, truth, Lord. It's true that she's a dog. She admitted it herself. Read. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Go ahead. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Uh-huh. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. This is when, this is when, who the world calls Christ, tone changed with this woman. His tone changed when she admitted that she's a dog compared to her, compared to him and his people. Read. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. Uh -huh. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. And that's when he healed her. When she admitted that she's a dog compared to the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And that's how you heathens may receive even a smidge of mercy, man. Huh? If you come over here and admit that you're a dog and admit that we're the children of God. And get on your hands and knees and lick up the dust like the Bible says you should. Okay? Give me Acts 2, 21. Acts chapter 2, verse 21. Uh huh. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. So the Christian will read this scripture, right? Top. This is Acts chapter 2 verse 21. Uh-huh. And it shall come to pass Read. that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord uh -huh. shall be saved. And that's where the Christian pastor will close the door, close the book, Salakia, close the book, pass around the plate, and start the dancing. Well, up here we keep reading, right? Start it again from the top. This is Acts chapter 2 verse 21. Uh-huh. And it shall come to pass. That whosoever. Whosoever, right? Oh, man. Whosoever. Anybody. Anybody in the earth. Whosoever. Go ahead. Shall call in the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. Shall be saved. Read. Ye men of Israel. Who? Ye men of Israel. The Christian church constantly, and Christians also, constantly accuse Hebrew Israelites of taking scriptures out of context. But they'll read that first verse and close the book and call it a day and act like everybody can be saved. Well, when they're the ones taking the scripture out of context. Because it tells you the context right after that verse. The context being, who's being spoken to? Who is the whosoever? Read. Ye men of Israel. That's the context. That's who's being spoken to. That's whosoever. The men of Israel. Read. Hear these words. That's who was meant to hear those words. That's who was meant to hear, whosoever shall be saved. Not no damn heathens, man. Not you white people. Not you East Indians, man. Alright, drop that. Give me. Give me Acts 13 and 22. I didn't even, I didn't even ask. The second my mom called me, she was like, get home now. You need to go home now. This is Acts chapter 13, verse 22. Uh huh. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, uh -huh. to whom also he gave testimony Read. and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, uh -huh. which shall fulfill all my will. Read. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior. Who, who, who did he raise a savior unto? Of this man's seed hath 
God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a, a savior. A savior was raised unto the nation of Israel, man. A savior was raised to the people who need a savior. You're speaking to the people then. Which is black people, Hispanic people, Native American people. The people on this earth who need a savior more than anybody, man. Finish that up. Jesus. When John had first preached before his coming, uh -huh. the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. Once again, Israel, man. Israel, Israel, Israel. That's who's getting this, 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 this teaching. Like we read earlier, Jesus Christ himself said, I taught openly to the world. That world is Israel. Drop that, give me um, Romans 9. We're gonna go to Paul, man. We're gonna go to the champion of the Christian church. God damn it, sometimes I feel like these Christians put Paul over Christ. Damn near it feels like it, don't it? Yeah. This is Romans chapter 9, verse 1. Read. I say the truth in Christ, uh -huh. I lie not. So Paul is not lying, man. Read. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost uh -huh. that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Read. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren. My brethren? My kinsmen? Uh huh. According to the flesh. According to the flesh. Read. Who are Israelites? Israelites are Paul's brethren, his kinsmen, according to the flesh. Go ahead. To whom pertaineth the adoption? To whom? Hold on, slow down, brother. To whom pertaineth? Possess. That's that. That's a possessive word. Pertaineth. It pertains. It belongs to. Let's see what belongs to the nation of Israel. Read. To whom pertaineth? To whom pertaineth the adoption uh -huh. and the glory and the covenant. The adoption, the glory, and the covenant pertain to Israel. Go ahead. And the giving of the law. The giving of the law. Go ahead. And the service of God. The service of the Most High. Read. And the promises. Uh huh. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came. And that's who Christ came for, man. Christ came for the children of Israel. All the promises, all the glory, everything is pertaining to Israel. Get Isaiah 41 27. Oh, that's what I get. Get Romans 10 and 15. It's in Romans chapter 10, verse 15. Huh? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace uh -huh. and bring glad tidings of good things. And that's what we're out here bringing to our people. We're bringing glad tidings. Because the white man being put in slavery under black people, that's good things, man. That's good news. That's good news that we'll be saved from the hands of our enemies, man. That's good news for black people. That's good news for Hispanic people. That we're gonna have these goddamn devils in chains. That we're gonna have these East Indians in chains, man. Read. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our report? Uh huh. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So like drop that, give me, give me uh now give me Isaiah 41 27. Alright? Because these goddamn Christian pastors, they were not sent, man. They were not sent to give you the true gospel. Really? Isaiah chapter 41, verse 27. Uh huh. The first shall say to Zion, Read. Behold, behold, them, and I will give to Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings. And the good tidings are coming to Jerusalem, to the nation of Israel. That's who the good tidings are for. That's who the good news is for. Because that's who's in dire need of good news. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Okay, drop that. Drop that, give me Isaiah 52 and 7. So we're not reading in the Bible about East Indians getting good tidings. About Edomites or white people getting good tidings. We're reading about the children of God receiving good tidings. Receiving the gospel. Thank you. 
Isaiah chapter 52 verse 7. Uh -huh. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him. This is the quote. This is where Romans 10 and 15 was quoted. From. Uh -huh. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. Bringeth good tidings. Go ahead. That publisheth peace. Uh huh. That bringeth good tidings of good. Uh huh. That publishes salvation. So where are we gonna publish salvation? That saith unto Zion. Saith unto who? That saith unto Zion. That's who. Well, that's where salvation is gonna be published. That's who we're gonna be saying salvation is coming to. Go ahead. That saith unto Zion, thy God reign. Thy God reign. The good tidings is for Zion. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and none else. Okay? Give me Isaiah the 14th chapter. This is Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. Uh huh. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Mercy is coming to the children of Israel. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Go ahead. And will yet choose Israel. Uh-huh. And set them in their own land. Go ahead. And the strangers. The what? And the strangers. We're going to read what is going to come of you strangers. Because a lot of strangers, a lot of you heathens will, will ask, well, if we're not going to be saved, what's going to happen to us? We'll read about it. Go ahead. And the strangers shall be joined with them. You're going to be joined with us. Go ahead. And shall, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. You're going to be cleaving on to us, huh? because you're going to see where, where the salvation is. So you're going to be trying to cleaving on to that to gain salvation. Go ahead. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. We're going to bring you home. Go ahead. And the house of Israel shall possess them. Shall what? And the house of Israel shall possess them. You East Indians, you Arabs, you white people, you will become a possession to the house of Israel, to the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You will become an object, a possession, a slave. Go ahead. And the house of Israel shall possess them uh -huh. in the land of the Lord. Read. For servants. For what? For servants. Servants. Read. And handmaids. You, you East Indians, all you other nations, you are going to be slaves to black people, Hispanic people, and Native Americans. You're going to be our slaves. Read. And they shall take them captives, uh -huh. whose captives they were. And see, it's not, it's not for some unjust reason. It's not for because we're, we want to be mean guys, and the Lord wants to be an, a, a mean guy. It's called, it's a little something called justice, man. You heathens know justice all too well. You get it for yourself whenever it's necessary. But blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we don't know justice. That's why you'll have people come up against us when we say that all these heathens are going to be our slaves because you don't even know what justice is. Right? Justice, according to God, is, 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 is give me Revelation 13. Right? We're going to show you justice according to the Lord. The Lord's justice. Because the white man doesn't have a single just bone in his body. Go ahead. This is Revelations chapter 13, verse 9. Uh -huh. If any man have an ear, let him hear. If anybody has understanding, let them hear this. Go ahead. He that leadeth into captivity. He who takes slaves. Read. Shall go into captivity. You are going to be a slave if you take slaves. What goes around comes around, right? That's the Lord's justice, man. And you heathens have taken us into slavery multiple times, man. Okay? Most recent being the so-called white man took our people into captivity. The Bible says you will go into captivity. Read on. He that killed with the sword. And you heathens have been killing our people with the sword. Chiefly you so-called white people, you Edomites. Huh? You've been killing our people with the sword for centuries, man. And you think you're going to get away with it scot-free. The Bible says, He who killeth with the sword, read, must be killed with the sword. 
Bible says you must be killed. Man. White people must be killed with the sword. For all this, the bloodshed that you've done, your blood must be shed. Thus saith the Lord. And that's the justice of the Lord, man. That's justice in the Bible. You take people into slavery, you are going to go into slavery. Your children are going to go into slavery. You kill people, you are going to be killed, man. Understand this. And with that, I succeed to the priest.